वेलकम बैक टू माय व्यूज एंड न्यूज अनदर वीडियो फॉर यू सम न्यू स्टोरीज फर्स्ट लिवर्स आई वांट टू डिस्कस आई वांट टू शेयर विद यू डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स अडॉप्टेड बाय इथियोपियन गवर्नमेंट इन डीलिंग विद अम्हारा रीजन एंड अदर रीजन्स A few days ago, a decision was made to disband, to restructure all regional special forces. Was the decision equally implemented in all regions? I have received pictures from an Ethiopian region where special forces are still operating. Secondly. some local ethiopian news sources are reporting that uh, an ethiopian government spokesperson has severely criticized the us government over suspension of food aid to ethiopia calling the suspension of food aid as a political decision is ethiopia changing its position because just uh, Yesterday Ethiopia offered to launch a joint investigation with USAID what happened today Thirdly words a rally was at last held today in the Amhara region in support of the ongoing operation against Fano factions uh, launched by Ethiopian National Defence Force Ethiopian government prosperity party they tried to organize such rallies in Amhara region recently but they could not convince people but in Dasi there was a rally today over hundreds attended fourthly on monday orthodox church is going to held a press briefing about talks with the tegarai We know that the church wants to reconcile with Tigray government, Tigray Orthodox Church, Tigray Archbishop is resisting. So, what does the church want to tell the people on Monday? Fifthly, we are Sudan. PM Abi is ready to visit Khartoum, Sudanese capital. Uh, it was confirmed by a top Sudanese leader who was in Addis Ababa yesterday and lastly UN has backed down in the stalemate over uh, the status of uh, UN special envoy to Sudan the special envoy was declared persona non grata by sudanese government yesterday uh, but secretary general spokesperson refused to accept the decision but later it seemed that uh, un backed down firstly viewers a few weeks ago we heard from uh, ethiopian government spokespersons from Birhan Ojula Ethiopian army uh, head and all said that uh, special forces uh, had been disbanded they said that all special forces were being restructured and special force members would would become part of uh, regional police federal police or Ethiopian national defense force decision was immediately implemented in the amhara region even before the announcement by endf general bano jula uh, and uh, government spokesperson implementation started in the amhara region and that is why since it was being rushed implementation was being rushed only in the amhara region people protested we saw clashes between ethiopian security forces federal forces and protesters in different parts of the amhara region special force amhara special force members refused to be disarmed uh, reportedly thousands of them fled and they joined armed struggle anti government resistance movement they joined for no factions some returned but hundreds are still there 
uh, fighting alongside foreign fighters. The decision was immediately implemented in the Amhara region. ASF members were disarmed. They were told to report at camps. Now there is no special force in the Amhara region. No one clad in special force uniform is operating in the Amhara region now. Special force members are undergoing trainings. Uh, they are going to become part of uh, regional police, prison police or federal police. There is no special force in Amhara region now. What about other regions? I stay in touch with people uh, from all regions, uh, from Somalia region as well, people contact me. Yesterday, a viewer contacted me. He said, Sajid uh, Amhar, uh, he said, Somali Leo police, Somali special force members are openly uh, operating in a Somali region, clad in the uniform. And uh, it is being said that they are going to become part of police, but in some areas they are still working. I requested him to send me pictures. And today he shared pictures with me. Pictures are from Nogob region, Nogob zone of the Somali region, Karin Agag area. Nymph zone no go. Here it's a routine for people to see uh, Somali Leo police still clad in their uh, uniforms carrying out operations. So, can we say now that Ethiopian government has adopted double standards in dealing with the disbandment of special forces in the Amhara region and in other regions. Main target of the decision was Amhara special uh, force. Ethiopian government wanted to disband Amhara special force. Uh, but since it saw that people rose in support of Amhara special force, then they said that the decision was being implemented in all regions and then we saw Bihana Jula, others uh, preaching that uh, the decision was uh, uh, essential for creation of a united military, one military, uh, that uh, establishment of regional special forces was illegal from day one. Uh, that is why the scene was necessary for uh, security. But you saw. Decision was fully implemented in the Amhara region. Since in other regions it was not being implemented, it was rushed in the Amhara region, people protested, special force members became part of one. You see, that is what happens when uh, intention is not right. Before the start of disarmament, uh, restructuring of special forces, all regional special force commanders should have held discussions. All of them should have been taken on board. But the Prosperity Party made a decision, then it was implemented in one region. When people protested, we saw mention of other regions too. In some other regions, special forces still operating reportedly. Secondly, viewers, uh, some Ethiopian local news sources are reporting that uh, Ethiopian government spokesperson has severely criticized the US government. I could not find the original uh, statement or video or audio of the government spokesperson. But several sources are claiming that in a talk, Ethiopian government spokesperson criticized the US government, USAID. USAID suspended delivery of all food items to Ethiopia 48 hours ago. It was revealed through an internal investigation launched by USAID that Ethiopian federal government, regional government officials, uh, regional forces, uh, Ethiopian army, all uh, were involved in stealing of aid. In seven regions of Ethiopia, flour, wheat were being stolen and in some areas, uh, flour being was being smuggled into neighboring countries like Somalia and Kenya. 
That is why USAID uh, suspended delivery of all food items to Ethiopia. A day after that, World Food Program of the UN also suspended delivery of food items to Ethiopia. Before that, suspension was only for Tigray, but now to entire Ethiopia, uh, delivery of uh, food items have been has been suspended. Yesterday, when USAID made the decision, we saw a joint statement by UA, USAID and Ethiopian government. In the statement, Ethiopian government agreed to hold joint investigation into the uh, allegations of aid theft and government promised that those involved in aid theft would be held accountable. But what happened today? Ethiopian government seems to be taking a new position. If the sources are correct, it is being reported that Ethiopian government spokesperson termed the suspension of food to Ethiopia as a political decision. That decision has no ground. It has no humanitarian aspect. It is a purely political decision. Purpose is to put pressure upon Ethiopian government. A deliberate campaign has been launched to defame Ethiopian army, Ethiopian federal government and regional governments. This is a new position taken by Ethiopian government if sources are correct. It is being reported by several Ethiopian news sources. And if the report is correct, it would point towards start of building of tensions between Ethiopia and US. Already Ethiopia is frustrated. Ethiopia was promised financial support. Despite talks, Ethiopia did not receive any bailout package from the IMF. Behind IMF, World Bank, there is US, EU as well. Ethiopian economy in trouble. Ethiopia unable to continue work on ongoing projects, unable to hire people, unable to launch new projects. Value of Burr in uh, official uh, and uh, open uh, markets different. Uh, black market and uh, official rates are different. Burr to dollar exchange rates. So at this crucial time, uh, if Ethiopia says the decision is political, it means we are going to see deterioration of Ethiopia-US relations. Let's uh, wait and uh, let's see if uh, I am able to get more details about this alleged claim by uh, the Ethiopian government terming the suspension of aid as a political decision. Third words, DASI, where a rally was held today, we can say it was a rally against Fano. Since the start of operation against Fano fighters, uh, Fano factions in the Amhara region, Prosperity Party, regional government have been trying to mobilize, organize people to hold protests in support of the operation uh, and in condemnation of the actions, the activities of extremist forces, Fano fighters in the region. We saw several attempts by governments, uh, by Prosperity Party, uh, offices to hold rallies. Uh, we saw a rally in uh, we saw a rally in Lalibala, but this rally turned into a protest a few weeks ago. A rally in Marsa could not be held because Fano fighters there resorted to firing people were terrified. In some other parts of Amhara region as well, uh, Fano fighters did not allow people to protest. In some cases, people refused to be part of the protest. But in Dasi today, there was a demonstration. Dasi deputy mayor was there, uh, Dasi city prosperity party uh, leader was there, Mola Hussain uh, prosperity party head of Dasi city attended this rally, uh, then Samuel Mola Legan deputy mayor of Dasi addressed the participants, hundreds were there who took to the streets today, uh, they condemned actions of extremist forces. 
who are the extremist forces obviously uh, fano fighters uh, fano factions they backed government's measures government measures include law enforcement operation operation by uh, ethiopian national defense force and the deputy mayor spoke he said some groups are trying to divide the people uh, uh through launching religious political ethnic uh, propaganda so they asked the people to be united first rally in volo dasi is in volo south volo uh, it's difficult uh, for government to organize rallies in gojam in gondar in shoa uh, against fano but in volo there is more acceptance for ethiopian government's uh, actions than in other parts of amhara region that is why we saw this rally uh, in dasi today uh, fano allied sources are condemning the rally they, they they are claiming that people were forced they were forced to be part of the rallies farmers are being forced because they uh, obviously are in need of fertilizers to form their lands fertilizers seeds they're being blackmailed by the government by a prosperity party that is why they have to attend such rallies uh, we saw a similar rally a few days ago again it was in volo i think so in volo uh, government regional government local government prosperity party they are able to organize people against uh, uh, fano factions uh, in support of ethiopian army's operation but in other parts of the mahar region no such big rallies held so far Fourth Libya's Tigray on Monday, Orthodox Church of Ethiopia will hold will will hold a press briefing in connection with the ongoing split between the Tigray Orthodox Church and Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The Church Public Relations Office today said that preparatory work has been completed for start of discussion with Tigray. We know that Tigray has announced a partial split with the main church. A few days ago, uh, U.S. State Department published a report about religious freedom in Ethiopia, and that report quoted uh, Marha Christos, Archbishop of Tigray, saying that uh, link with uh, Ethiopian Orthodox Church had been broken. Mara Christos showed uh, intent uh, to elect a new synod a new patriarch but the main church led by a tigrayan archbishop abune matias is trying to reconcile with tigray orthodox church that is why a few days ago the main church uh, announced the formation of a delegation of uh, notable religious leaders uh important ethiopian uh uh elders uh, the delegation was tasked with discussions with tigray leadership tigray clergy tigray archbishops one visit to tigray by this uh, delegation was postponed it seems second attempt is being made why does the church want uh, to brief the media on monday i think now church wants to do uh church wants to engage tigray archbishops publicly it does not want to hold any talks in secret on monday the main church i think might announce uh, sending of delegation to tigray uh and if uh, orthodox church makes a public decision Tigray archbishops will have to respond publicly as well. Let's see. We'll try to find out uh, details and then update you on Monday about this uh, uh, new announcement by Orthodox Church. How flexible is Tigray Orthodox uh, Church? Does it want to reconcile? Uh, some recent statements indicate that tigray archbishops don't want to reconcile with the main church but let's see what happens on monday last year sudan two new stories ethiopian pm abi is interested in visiting khartoum malik agar is now deputy chairman of sudan sovereignty council led by abdul fatal burhan 
Al Burhan a few days ago removed Hamati Hamdan Dagalo from the Sovereignty Council and Malik Agar was made the deputy chairman. Malik Agar is head of uh, Sudan People Liberation Movement North Chapter. Uh, he is from Blue Nile State. And after his uh, appointment, he started a tour of African countries. He visited South Sudan, then he was in Kenya. He met with, uh, I think, Yuvari Museveni, two Ugandan president. And yesterday, he was in Addis Ababa. He met with Ethiopian PM Abi. And at the meeting, PM Abi offered to mediate that he was ready to visit Khartoum, to sit with Al Burhan and uh, Hamati for peace talks, for ceasefire talks. Malik Agar, in his talk with uh, a PM Abi, uh, said that uh, there shouldn't be multiple platforms for negotiations. And Malik Agar supported IGAD's initiatives. We know that IGAD, when the war broke out in Sudan, uh, nominated three African presidents, the president of Djibouti, uh, South Sudan and Kenya to mediate uh, in Sudan. That mediation offer uh, did not go well. Uh, it did not uh, get response, especially from rapid support forces. Sudanese military backed this initiative. Then the two sides uh, agreed on Saudi and American mediation. Uh, which led to agreement on two ceasefires. First seven day ceasefire implemented partially, second five day ceasefire partially implemented, but on day two it collapsed and then a new ceasefire. This morning implemented on uh, Saturday morning, a new ceasefire implemented in Sudan after the two sides met in Jada. And this ceasefire is holding reportedly so far. No major violations reported this time. It will end uh, at 6 a.m. on a Sunday local time. Let's hope that it is extended. So, uh, Sudanese military, of course, Malik Agar is part of Sudanese military. He's supporting Sovereignty Council. Sudanese military wants uh, IGAD led mediation, uh, Intergovernmental Authority and Development, uh, with its a seven or eight member Afghan bloc. And on the 12th of uh, June, on Monday, IGAD is uh, going to hold a meeting in Djibouti. It will be attended by African leaders, UN uh, officials will be there to African representatives will be there too. Uh, let's see what happens there. So, I think uh, Malik Agar has visited these African countries before the start of IGAD session. He wants African countries to send a joint message to rapid support forces, to Western world, to US, to Arab world, that Africa is ready to resolve this crisis. Let's see what happens on uh, uh, Monday in a Djibouti meeting uh, of IGAD. Secondly, UN is stepping back in the confrontation with Sudanese government over expelling of UN uh, special envoy to Sudan. Volker Perthus was declared persona non grata by Sudanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Before that, Sudanese military chief Al Burhan wrote a letter to uh, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres asking him to replace Volker Perthes. Antonio Guterres refused and then Sudanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, declared Volker Perthes persona non grata. Volker Perthes was in Addis Ababa. The Sudanese military refused to deal with Volker Perthes. Uh, Antonio Guterres spokesperson refused to accept the decision of Sudan to expel Volker Perthes, but uh, today uh, UN back down. Now, uh, Clementine Salami has presented his uh, her credentials to Sudanese Minister, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, she is replacing Volker Perthes. Now, we can say that Volker Perthes now uh, has been expelled from Sudan, or at least has been officially uh, disabled. Sudanese government is not ready to uh, deal with him. 
that is why clementine silami the lady uh, now uh, has presented her credentials to sudanese ministry of foreign affairs un had to back down and that is what was expected if you remember in the last week i reported that in a similar stalemate uh, in ethiopia between ethiopian government and un officials un had to step back UN backed off and UN officials uh, expelled from Ethiopia had to leave the country. Same is happening here in Sudan that Volker Perthus uh, expelled and replaced by another UN diplomat. Thank you for watching.